Hey everybody, good morning. My name is uh, Ricardo De Cruz, and I represent Complete Auto Reports and Joe Man Auto Service. So we've done a few ADOS calibrations live here at our facility, and today we have another one. We have a 2020 Honda Passport that we're going to be performing a camera calibration live today. So I want to talk about a few things before we get into the camera calibration. The first thing is, yes, Sean, I pressed the go live button. The second thing is, when you're performing calibrations on post-collision vehicles, you need to really, really check documentation. Because if you don't, you're going to miss a lot of steps that the OEs really want you to take to ensure that safety is restored to like new conditions. So up on the screen, you're going to see the HDS printout sheet that tells me uh, I have millimeter wave radar aiming incomplete. It also lost communication with the radar, and I have some uh, headlight malfunctions. So post clearing the vehicle, all of the codes except for the millimeter wave radar aiming incomplete went away. Um, most of them probably occurred while the body shop was doing work. So this is normal stuff that you would see. So if you don't read OE documentation, you would assume this vehicle only needs a millimeter wave radar aiming, which controls adaptive crews and can control some emergency braking situations. But when you take a minute to go check Honda's documentation, you will find that they have this document called Aiming Driving Support Systems. Uh, this is now version 11 from Honda, and this one is from November of 2022. I could not find an updated version, so I'm going with the assumption that this is the most correct information available at the moment. And when you're reading this, they do a really great job of outlining every system that the vehicle may have and what it actually does. In addition to that, when you start to look up each system, you will see notes. And in those notes is information about when you may have to perform a calibration. A repetitive note is structural damage includes anything beyond minor cosmetic abrasions <clears throat> excuse me to the welded riveted or bonded parts of the main unit body so that means that anytime structural damage has happened the millimeter wave radar needs to be calibrated in addition to that if you keep going down you will find similar for blind spot and lane watch so blind spot you would only really do if you had collision repair work performed on the body panels in the rear. But the multi-purpose camera indicates that you are to calibrate it if there's any structural damage. So if you went just based off the scan, you would see that you only needed the millimeter wave radar aiming. But from Honda's documentation, you see that you need the radar and the multi-purpose camera to be completely re-aimed or recalibrated. So in today's exercise, there's a few things that I've already done. So Honda also has before aiming setting documentation. And what this means is before aiming or before calibrating, you need to perform uh, some basics essentially. And they give you notes. So aiming should be in a well-lighted area. There should be no bright objects in the back of the target. Make sure the suspension has not been modified. Tires are all correct and their pressure is correct. Uh, fuel tank is full, remove all cargo, make sure steering wheel is pointed straight ahead, shift lever to park with the parking brake, and mark the floor uh, with tape if and when you need it. If you guys have watched my videos in the past, you know that we rarely use tape except to maybe mark some center points. We try to use lasers to effectively do uh, the alignment. What you're going to see today, or what I'm going to show you, is I do not do the shortcut alignment that I showed you last week. I perform a full lineup with both sides of the vehicle because when you're aiming the camera accuracy is insanely important and the best way that i have seen to be accurate is by drawing lines on the left and the right and the center and then tying them all together where the manufacturer wants so in this case for the camera toyota wants you 6,000 millimeters from the center of the front wheel so I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything before I go back into the shop and continue. But we have the vehicle all set up. I'm not going to waste everybody's time and show you how I do calibrations again. If you need to, please check out any of my previous videos. I will show you how to cut your time significantly on aiming almost any vehicle that I've ever encountered. So from that, we already did the alignment. 
We've already done all the prerequisites. The millimeter wave radar has already been adjusted and aligned. I have the Honda three target system set up and I have a surprise for you guys here today. So I have two Honda target setups. I have an original OEM that was purchased from Honda and I have one that I purchased from Diag.net. I believe the gentleman's name was Dan. Dan, your setup is awesome, thank you. So Dan has a homemade setup where he bought Honda targets and then put together to stand himself with PVC pipe. And you may think this is unorthodox, but when you see the Honda one, you will see that Dan has actually done a great job with his home setup. And we're gonna use it today to showcase how sometimes a little bit of ingenuity and correct targets helps you do a lot of work and make some money at your shop. So uh, I've also taken front suspension measurements. So part of the instructions here want you to measure the front suspension. So they want you to measure the front left, the front right, get your measurements in millimeters, subtract with this H2 formula, and then compare it against what Honda says. So this is a all wheel drive vehicle. So Honda says 834 millimeters is standard. And we did this twice. So we did it with the tire pressure at 40 PSI. Front left was 839, front right was 837. That brought me to a setting value of H2, which is right here, minus five millimeters, less than or equal to plus five millimeters. Now, when I set the tire pressure at the correct tire pressure, which is 35 PSI, the front left was now 837 millimeters and the front right was 836 millimeters. And the value is small, so it's four in, or it's 2.5 instead of four, but you can see that there is a change just by setting tire pressure. So I've got all this set. My setting value is going to be H2. I'm gonna switch cameras now into the back of the shop and we're gonna perform this camera calibration. This one is also significantly different in that Honda not only wants a static calibration, they want a dynamic calibration as well. So we're gonna perform the static one. I'm gonna close this video out and then I have to get on the road because the dynamic calibration needs to be completed within 30 minutes of the static or else you have to start all over again. Um, I will record my test drive. I don't really post them, but maybe one day we will. Just wanna show you where that goes here. So now when you're done, precaution for the dynamic camera aiming, and here they have some really specific instructions. So they want you to drive at 45 to 70 miles an hour for 10 minutes or more. And they tell you here, you must complete aiming within 30 minutes or you will fail. Poor weather such as rain, fog, or snow may prevent the camera from aiming and other variables, wet roads, uh, in the dark, stuff like that. So pretty much giving you all the information that I think is relative to this 2021 Honda Passport. And now we are going to switch off into the shop and get started. So sorry about the feedback guys. I'm gonna try and reset the microphone, see if that helps. Hello. Hello. All right, I'm just gonna try and talk loud so you guys can hear everything. So this is the homemade setup that we picked up from Diag.net. So you may think that PVC is unorthodox, but most of the Honda OE stuff is all PVC. So this gentleman obviously got his hands on a Honda setup and measured everything out. And from that, he replicated their entire target system. Forgive me, I'm just fixing something here. So I've actually measured these out. They measure out identical to the Honda system behind it. Much to his credit, this is actually significantly more stable than the Honda system. And I don't wanna mess with this because this one is already set up for our calibration. 
but I'm going to show you how unstable the Honda one can be. So this is the original Honda one. Uh, there are really no adjustments to it. You kind of set it. It seems to meet all the requirements that I've seen so far for Hondas, but it is very flimsy. So if you try moving this thing around, look at what just happened here. All I did was slightly touch this and it is all out of whack. So this is a kind of a troublesome setup. I mean, I've gotten it to work before, but it is not ideal. As you can see, I can't even manage it here. There are some ways to make this sturdier. I haven't really gotten there yet, but just showing you, this is not fun. And this is the original Honda setup. The only thing that is not original is this PVC pipe that I used here. And that is because I used the original Honda pipe on the setup I'm gonna use for calibration today. So I'm gonna put this down for a minute. I'm gonna move this Honda target system out of the way. We're gonna use the homemade Honda target system. And by homemade, I only mean the frame. These are original Honda targets that were purchased and used with this custom frame. So now let me show you the two laser setup. If you've watched any of my videos before, you've definitely seen me do this. Except in the video last week, I showed you how to do it with only one laser. And I only recommend that for a millimeter wave radar because it is accurate enough to make everything work. With a camera setup, I want my lanes to be absolutely perfect. So I will take a little bit more time and draw both lines and make it happen. Hey, Sean, can you shut the lights off really quick? <clears throat> Give me one second. Got to turn the heat off. Forgot all about that. All right. A little bit quieter. So you can see both of my lines. I have pictures to show you that they were set up correctly. So this is my line for the millimeter wave radar at 4,000 millimeters. And you can see that I am meeting the right side line at the exact same spot. Doing the same thing for the camera setup, except we are at 6,000 millimeters. And the good thing about this is that I also have my vertical alignment correct. I cannot say enough about this homemade setup. So now let's get started. So I got my ignition on, got HDS up and running with errors. Here is my post scan after the millimeter wave radar. So you can see I technically have no codes, but this car is not done to Honda standards. So now we're gonna go into static camera aiming. Gives me some requirements. Hey, Sean, can you turn the lights back on, please? So now it is asking me where my standard is. And we did this before, so we're gonna press number two on the keyboard. Or not press, we're gonna click number two, and then we're gonna check. So now middle target, all set up. I'm gonna show in here. Okay, complete. It now wants the left target.
and now it wants the right target. And now some instructions telling me to turn the ignition switch off. So forgive the reach. Turn it on. And static camera aiming is now complete. So hope you guys learned something today. I'm now going to go perform the dynamic drive on this vehicle. This setup really takes me more to talk about than it does to do, guys. Most vehicles are lined up and done in less than an hour, unless I'm making a video to show you what you can and what you might be able to accomplish on your own. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Enjoy your day.